Good morning, guys and girls. Here is Francesco. I'm a chemical specialist and I've got a master's degree in industrial chemistry. Today, I want to tell you something about fabrics, explaining their chemical composition. So, let's start. Do you know that chemistry is everywhere? It's not automatic to think that clothes are made of molecules. Exactly. In this moment, you are wearing molecules. There are many types of fabrics, but we can classify them in four market categories natural plant based, natural protein, artificial, and synthetic fabrics. The most used natural plant-based fabrics are cotton, linen, hemp, and jute. The most diffused natural protein fabrics are wool, silk, and leather. Regarding artificial fabrics, we can consider nitrocellulose, cellulose acetate, rayon, and lanitol, while nylon, polyester, and acrylic are synthetic fabrics. In this video, I'm gonna explain to you the composition of some of these fabrics. We can start from wool. Wool is mainly made up of alpha keratin, a very resistant and fibrous protein also present in the hair, nails, in the animal fur. Its resistance is given by the secondary structure, composed almost exclusively of alpha helix twists to form dimers called coiled coils. The amino acids that make up the keratin are therefore largely with hydrophobic side chains to favor the twisting and therefore the alpha helical secondary structure. These amino acids have the hydrophobic substituents towards the outside of the dimer and therefore make the keratin insoluble in pollen solvents. The coiled coils further pair together to form protofilaments, which further increase the resistance and impermeability of the keratin to solvents. Thanks to the presence, of cysteine, keratin can be hardened by disulfide bonds and it can be subjected to redox processes. Keratin oxidation reduction reactions underlie many hair treatments, giving a perm a reducing agent such as ammonium thioglycolate breaks the disulfide bridges. The air is styled and through oxidation, for example with hydrogen peroxide, new disulfide bonds are formed that maintain the new shape of the air. In the same way as hair, wool is not very penetrable to water. If we want to let it die, we must try to saturate the ends of the fiber rather than the lateral surface. Silk is composed of two main proteins, fibroin and sericin. Sericin is the protein which gives silk its adhesive power, while fibroin is a beta sheet protein that gives resistance and elasticity to the fiber. Fibrin is made up of approximately 206 small amino acid sites organized into stacked beta sheets. The presence of small amino acids, 74 glycines, 45 alanines, and 17 serines allow the protein to better pack the beta sheets with the chains methyls of the alanine and the hydrogens of the glycines from opposite sides. In this way, the sheets can interact with strong water bath interactions and hydrogen bonds to make the protein extremely resistant. Collagen is the most important protein in leather and skin. Tanning consists in the elimination of the putrescible matter from the collagen of the leather to make it durable and non perishable. There isn't just one type of collagen, there are various types and with different characteristics. The most common collagen one consists of a triple helical secondary structure that assembles itself with other helices to form reticulated fibers. The triple helix is formed by repetition of amino acids, mainly small bulky glycines and other amino acids, such as proline and hydroxyproline. The triple helix structure aggregates in a staggered manner with four other helices to form macrofibrils. Cellulose makes up approximately 50% of wood by weight and is used in the paper industry. Cotton, on the other hand, is made up of up to 95% pure cellulose and flax. Hemp and jute are composed up of 90% pure cellulose. It's a semi-crystalline polymer with a repetitive unit of cellulose. The structure of cellulose is a binary helix with glucose units rotated 180 degrees to each other, linked by a beta 1,4 glycosidic bond and stabilized by hydrogen bonds between the hydroxyls hydrogen hydrogen atoms. The tertiary structure is semi-crystalline thanks to the hydrogen bonds that exist which can form between chains and sheets planes of chains. The dense network of interactions form the fibril and uh, the cellulose fiber. Thanks to the substituents 
of the repetitive units, cellulose is very hydrophilic and uh, it's easily soaked in water, although it's not soluble. Cellulose can be easily functionalized and it can be modified. Among the artificial fibers, the first one that stands out, created by man through chemical modification of the cellulose, is rayon, invented at the beginning of the 20th century. It's an anabol cellulose used as a substitute for silk. It's produced by esterification of 1,1.5 hydroxyls of cellulose of carbon disulfide. With this chemical treatment, the so-called cellulose sensate is obtained soluble in water and stable in alkaline environment that can be extruded in diluted acid to hydrolyze the ester and reform the cellulose into more defined fibers. The exantate solution of cellulose is very viscous, hence the name rayon viscous. Cellulose can be also solubilized in cupharmonic solutions, such as Schwarzen reagents, invented by Matthias Schwarz in 1857. The production process of cupramonic rayon consists in the dissolution of cellulose in an ammonic solution of copper hydroxide or sulfate. This species is formed and it's able to solubilize cellulose, which can be extruded in an acidic environment as for the viscous process. Pfizer never patented the process, which made the fortune of many entrepreneurs until the advent of the viscous process, which was cheaper and efficient. Nitrocellulose is a nitrated cellulose and it is chronologically the first artificial fiber ever discovered. In 1832, Henry Braconaut realized that nitric acid makes starches and sawdust explosives and greatly increased their combustibility. In the 1846, Christian Frederick Schorbein discovered accidentally that the cotton immersed in a mixture sulfonitrica becomes an explosive that burns without leaving hash. The maximum degree of nutrition is 2.7, often mistakenly simplified to 3, and it can be modulated according to the required characteristics. Whether mono or binitrated is used also as polymer or fiber. Furthermore, by stabilization of the nitrocellulose with comfort, it obtains cellulose, historically used to produce cinematography films. If dissolved and stabilized in ether, can instead have a collagen used in medicine. Cellulose acetate is the fourth known natural fiber produced after polyesters, nylon, and rayon. It is produced by complete acetylation of the cellulose into acetic anhydride. Cellulose 3 acetate is extremely poorly hydrophilic, and uh, by partial hydrolysis, it is convertible into polymers to varying degrees different hydrophilicity. Cellulose acetate has replaced cinematographic films in nitrocellulose, and it's currently used to produce filters and sponges for sensor or biodirectors. Lanital is an artificial fiber produced from casein, used in a 1 to 1 or 1 to 3 blend with whole. Invented by 1935 by Antonio Ferretti, it is produced by dispersing casein in an alkaline environment, treating it with carbon disulfide and by extrusion in acid, similar to a rayon viscous process. The main drawback of this material is the need to mature it for several weeks in formaldehyde. This fiber is no longer in production for this reason. Among synthetic fibers, we mention only spandex, a vast family of elastomers composed of aromatic polyureas, uh, which act as rigid portion, and polyols, which act as a flexible portion of the fiber. The relative composition of the elastomeric mixture confers different properties to the material. The rigid parts keep the structure unchanged thanks to the hydrogen bonds, while the flexible parts allow the fiber to stretch. The combination of these two portions allows the elastic effect without permanent deformations. Okay, guys and girls, these are the most popular molecules that are present in our clothes. Thank you for watching my video. If you like it, please give me a like and subscribe to my channel to stay updated for the next video. See you soon. Bye from Frank.